What's going on, YouTube? You already know who it is. Back at a brand new video for you guys today. I missed you all. Happy hump day! Okay. We are getting along with the week, so we're going to start it off with this video. It's called 20 Greatest Horror Movies of All Time. Now, personally, I can't really say 20 off the top of my head, but I'll think of some along the way. So let's check it out. I might give y'all top five, maybe top ten. But let's check this video out, shall we? Okay. Hold on. Let's check it on out, shall we? In about a three, two, one. The horror genre is home to a lot of quality flicks, as well as low budget schlock, making it hard for a viewer to determine what's good and what's a waste of time. Fortunately, we've patched together a list of those films that oh, are yeah, worth the watch. Though these movies are all pretty you different in subject matter and tone, they're all worthwhile horror films that have helped define the genre. The Exorcist. Even I, I four decades after its release, 1973's The Exorcist is still the Don't possession thriller it. by which all others are judged, and for good reason. Its ability to infuse a stewing sense of dread alongside moments of body horror stands alone. The grotesque tour de force made no apologies for its use of profanity or gross body fluid spewing, and Your it's a lasting classic as a hell. result. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, that Existing good. at the perfect intersection of art and schlock, like the, the Texas Chainsaw ones, Massacre from 1974 is a tangibly dirty, grungy, yeah. and frightening movie. Launching sequels and a remake franchise that are by turns too loud and too trashy, the movie that started it all is an exercise in unpleasantness. Its characters are largely unlikable, its villains the perfect version of incomprehensible hillbilly cruelty. Oh, you really just stood there. The plot, essentially fails. about a Texas road trip that goes south fast, will remind you why they tell you to not ever talk to strangers, pick up hitchhikers, or ask questions about what's going on in the rickety old house at the edge of town. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Never heard the of very that definition one. of a time-worn tale in cinema, the 1978 version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers is a story that's been remade over and over again, which speaks to the strength of its premise. The feeling of being helpless in an unrecognizable society is something many might identify with, but the slow burn introduction of these alien invaders is deeply Ugh. disturbing. Thrilling to the final frame, it's a story that stays with you, anchored by an excellent cast of smart, unique characters that you root for, making it hurt all the more when they fail and fall. Oh, that's the Alien. Ridley Scott's Alien from 1979 continues to resonate so many years later because it has a lot of unique qualities. A female protagonist who's just as strong and capable as anybody else, a profound sense of isolation, and an enemy that cannot be reasoned with. Its characters are constantly under the gun, tasked with identifying their threat while simultaneously shit, struggling Ugh. to survive against it. Beyond the impressive intellectual framework, there are also some shock and awe scenes that have since become iconic moments of cinema. The Shining. I was With good. brilliant performances from its cast, quotable lines, out. unmatched cinematography, and those awful twins, The Shining from 1980 is an absolute masterpiece. Here's Johnny! <laughs> It warms its way into your head with beautiful imagery and a hypnotic pace, showing the disillusion of one man's sanity over the course of an isolated winter at the Overlook Hotel. Stanley Kubrick's at his best here, with deliberate choices made for each frame that's as visually stunning as it is packed with unforgettable tension. The Thing John Carpenter is considered the, the master of horror, and this may well idea. be his best effort in the genre. Taking oh, creature feature came elements out of his and combining them with the who's who paranoia of a Body Snatchers remake, The Thing from 1982 plants its characters in isolated Antarctica and tasks them with surviving against an alien life form that can assume their likenesses. It's a rich premise that combines subtle, character-based interplay with full-blown body horror, like a human head scuttling around with spider legs. With a cast to root oh, for hell. and a villain to fear, The Thing is exhibit up. A in the argument for John Carpenter's primacy among horror engineers, a remake that runs laps around its source material and bests any modern attempts to do better. Return of the Living Dead. An offshoot of George Romero's Living Dead films, this spiritual cousin is easily one of the most goofily enjoyable oh, zombie hell movies no. ever. 1985's Return of the Living Dead follows a group of dirtbag ravers whose Jesus. graveyard party gets upset by a zombie uprising caused by acid rain. Return takes a lively approach to its material that still feels fresh, even if the hilariously dated fashion of the characters decidedly does not. Why I mean, it was the 80s, right? Not people. Brains. Being too self-serious about zombie material is a trap that lots of movies fellows fall into, but Return sidesteps that problem with aplomb. It's not a parody, just a great ride. Jacob's Ladder 
This quiet character study from 1990 oh, yeah. follows Jacob Singer, a Michael Vietnam Ely? veteran and postal service worker who slowly comes to believe that either his sanity or reality itself is falling apart. The film is notable for some standout sequences. Take for example Singer's long gurney ride through a hellish hospital littered with body parts, blood, and inhuman monsters gone mad. What the the sequence has influenced horror media for decades afterwards, so even if you haven't seen this movie, you've definitely seen its impact. In the decades since its release, it's developed into a noted cult classic lauded for its indelible imagery as much as the deep melancholy at its core. Scream. The first film ever to kick off the self-aware horror trend is also still the best. That phone call will have me fucked up. some scary movie. You like scary movies? Uh-huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Wes Craven, who was already horror royalty R. thanks R. to The Hills Have Eyes, The People Under the Stairs, and the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, outdid himself with My Scream boyfriend. in 1996. This funny, freaky slasher flick subverted every trope in the book and roundly mocked the horror genre at large while still scaring the hell out of its audience. Oh, you want to play psycho killer? Can I be the helpless victim? You are. The Blair Witch Project. The found footage project that started it all, 1999's The Blair Witch Project launched I've plenty of copycat projects that one. never got anywhere close to the haunted, pine-scented okay. quality of the original. The forest itself becomes the monster in this ultra-low-budget camcorder picture, where every tangle of twigs and leaves takes on an eerie suspicion. Following a group of hapless young filmmakers as they circle the wilderness, lost and increasingly certain they're being hunted, the film is a story about madness, isolation, and distrust while still infusing a classic ghost story in its bones. Its title antagonist is never truly seen, and maybe not even real, but that's part of the beauty of the film. The witch's absence offers an uncertainty that gets to the heart of what nah. horror is. Fear and a sense of helplessness in the face of the unknown. Audition. Back in the days before OK Cupid or E Harmony, a widowed middle aged businessman had to get creative when it came to finding a date. Or at least that's the premise of Audition from 1999. This Japanese horror film is a like, very like, slow burn, out. with a scream worthy finale as the poor lovelorn protagonist realizes that the young lady he's auditioned to be his new bride comes with a checkered past and some disturbing baggage. In addition to boasting stellar performances and a creative, scary script, Audition has the added benefit of making your worst Tinder date look like a great time by comparison. Comparison. The Descent. Claustrophobes be wary. If you've got a fear of being trapped in tight spaces, The Descent from 2005 is one of the scariest movies you could watch. The unique story of a group of female cavers who get lost in the uncharted depths, The Descent is a top-notch horror experience that gets taken to the next level when the hero stops spelunking Damn, and has to start caving in monsters' skulls. Ooh. They've got to fight for survival all while wading through massive lakes of blood. Be sure to catch the version with the original ending, which was deemed too dark for U.S. audiences and cut from the theatrical release. The Mist a lot of Stephen King's horror novels have been made into movies or TV shows, but only some of them have been successful at translating the tension and terror of the, the source material to the screen. I don't give up. I don't think you'd like it, Henry. The Mist was of the few to get it right thanks to the unsettling plot tweak sprinkled in by writer-director Frank Darabont. The 2007 <laughs> film tells the story of a New England town beset by unspeak... Sorry about that, you guys had a phone call, so let's get back into it otherworldly horrors that descend under the cover of an impenetrable, mysterious mist. It's a solid monster movie, but its scariest moments are the ones that reveal the dark tribalism of human beings who believe they're witnessing the end of the world, and it pulls no punches on that front. King even famously said that Darabont's gut-wrenching twist ending for the film is the one he wishes he'd written himself. Paranormal Activity Found footage horror that got a fresh good. face with this 2007 movie, which proved that you don't need a gothic mansion or dilapidated cabin in the woods to make a highly effective haunting flick. All the action <laughs> of paranormal activity takes place in the comfy, carpeted setting of a suburban townhome, as a pair of newlyweds learn they're not yeah. entirely alone in their house. Like its genre predecessor, The Blair Witch Project, paranormal activity is all about the slow burn. Even the most ordinary occurrences, like a door swinging shut or a hall light illuminating off-screen, are imbued with foreboding, and the teeny tiny cast does a convincing job of making the found footage premise feel real. Yeah, that Martyrs. creeped me the fuck out. Profoundly disturbing to the point of being unwatchable, 2008's Martyrs was one of the progenitors of the French <laughs> extreme horror movement and earned that distinction in every single way. From the opening sequence, which depicts the chillingly merciless murder of an entire family, the movie only gets harder Damn. to watch. It's a curiosity killed the cat parable about revenge, mercy, and humanity's search for meaning, and it's unlike anything you've ever seen. 
It challenges you to keep watching right up to the cruel and bitter end. But watch the original rather than the 2016 remake, because that one's scary for a whole different series of reasons. Let the right one in. Not to be confused with Let I've Me In, the regrettable it. American remake, Let the Right One In was a sleepy Swedish surprise. In the 2008 pick, a bullied young boy named Oscar makes friends with an unusual new neighbor who only comes out at night because, well, she's a vampire. But Let the Right One In doesn't go the way of Twilight or True Blood and try to get too campy about human-vampire relations. Instead, it's a smart piece of commentary on the loneliness of the human condition. That is, when people aren't being drained of blood, bursting into flames, or getting torn to shreds by a bunch of Damn, cute kitties. Damn, You're next. Kitty. Home invasion thrillers are a staple <laughs> really subgenre within the horror bite, film though. family, and Your Next is a perfect specimen yeah, of this often mishandled storyline. With an opening that scene funny. that sets just the right mood, a stylish execution, and a That's badass final funny. girl who you'll be rooting for from the get-go, there's nothing about this 2011 movie that isn't utterly on point. Except maybe for the fact that there's no sequel. Good night, Mommy. This Austrian feature from 2014 is a masterclass in making the audience feel very, very bad. Two twins develop a syndrome that makes them believe their mother, lost in depression after being disfigured in an accident, has been replaced by an imposter. The story unfolds Damn. with train wreck inevitability as their investigation turns from curious to cruel, playing with the allegiances of the audience in an excruciating way. The story is riddled uh -uh! with blank spaces and patches of silence where a lesser a film would try to tell mouth. the audience too much. The amazing result is that the viewers have to do the legwork on figuring out what's really going on. And the film is not so much about jump surprises as it is about the pure horror of watching innocent children do terrible, unspeakable things. The Witch. Not only is The Witch historically authentic to an eerie degree, but its careful <laughs> approach to introducing scary supernatural elements into the real-life religious anxieties of colonial New Englanders is intensely unsettling. And the climax of this 2015 film is an emotional piece of hell. A lot hinges on the endings of horror movies, and this one sticks the landing with confidence. It's an unsparing picture, the very meaning of dreadful, and a modern classic. Get Out. A Meet the Parents situation goes terribly awry in Jordan Shout Peele's directorial Jordan Peele. debut, Get Out, which hit theaters in 2017. The movie follows interracial couple Rose and Chris, who are visiting for a weekend at Rose's parents' estate, a classy place where the polished veneer of white liberal tolerance turns out to be masking some deep, dark, terrifying secrets about why there aren't more black folks in town. Get Out fully lives up to the hype, delivering suspense and scares while also tackling complex and uncomfortable racial issues with incisive wit. If it doesn't make you scream, it'll definitely make you squirm. Get to the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sing. Thanks for watching. Click the loop. For the most part, the ones that I've uh, known, the ones that I've watched on this list, uh, that's a pretty good selection, most of them. Because some of them I've never heard of them. So uh, for me, um, if I, I'm going to say, I'm going to go with top 10 because that's a lot. 20 horror movies, that's a lot to name. I'm going to go with, and this is also based on how I experienced it when I watched some of these movies for the first time and how they had me fucked up back in the day as a kid. Listen. So, I'm going to go with <coughs> Nightmare on Elm Street, okay? The original, not the one that was made in 2010. That one was I, right, but I didn't like how Freddy was looking. Like, can't, listen, I'm going to say it again. Can't nobody play Freddy Krueger like Robert England. I don't care what none of y'all say. That's it. Okay? Um. So, yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street. Halloween. Okay? But for me, more so, when Rob Zombie remade it back in 2007, I believe, um, that one had me all messed up. Like, the music, it was like, dun, 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 coming down the stairs all creepy. The old one creeped me out, too, but it was just something about it. You know what I'm saying? Something about it. I mean, it's Michael Myers. Just imagine that. You in a house, you see this big, tall-ass man in this suit. Um, and this mask, and it's just like, yeah, definitely Halloween. The Candyman. That should have been, pro yeah, I put that in number, that's number three. Because I told this story before. Real quick, I was at my aunt's house. Um, and at first I was watching one of the Jurassic Park movies. And I should have just stayed watching it. But I was so curious to watch The Candyman. So I'm like, okay. But, uh, I low-key regret it. Because... 
But then again, I kind of don't because there's no telling how it would have messed me up now. Because, like, just to see certain scenes uh, in that movie that had me messed up then, like, just imagine, like, it probably would have had me even more messed up now, even as an adult. But because I woke up that night in shivers, like, that movie had me shook, like, literally shook before we even start making that a, a, a term that we use. Um, but definitely the candy man. How many times did I say that? I think I only said it three times. That's it. I ain't gonna say it no more. Um, Child's Play, because Chucky had me fucked up too back in the day. I, I didn't want nothing to do with Chucky, Child's Play, Charles Lee Ray, his wife, his son, none of y'all asses. Because every time we go in a the theater, they had that little, you know, that little crane box machine. You know, you get the little toy with the little, the claw, that thing. Man, they had a picture of him talking about some catch me if you can. It's like, ooh, like, the, I don't know what it was. It just terrified me. I've never seen Chucky a day in my life during that time. But when I first saw, saw Child's Play, I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to just stay up tonight watching cartoons or something. So, um, so what did I say? Nightmare. <coughs> Halloween. Okay, man. Child's Play number five. Okay, we're going to go with number five. Um... What else? Dead silence. Oh, 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 Let me tell y'all something. I was 11 years old. I was a preteen when I first saw that. Um, it was, I was terrified. Like, not even long in the movie, I was already fucked up with what happened to Lisa. If you saw the movie, you know who I'm talking about. Her face all cracked open, just like, like that big, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I was looking at my popcorn the damn near the whole movie. Because I was scared shitless. Okay, and then you see a woman like Mary Shaw coming after you and your tongue, but specifically your tongue to body your ass. I mean, how could that not be scary? And especially for an 11 year old girl. Ah, the fuck, ah. Also, I'm gonna go with uh, The Conjuring because The Conjuring, now that was good. That was good. And then not to mention, we got there late and we just made it to get some last minute tickets. Uh, me, my mom, my best friend, and my aunt. We went to go see it. We was all the way in the front, like right. We had to look up and shit at the screen, which was uncomfortable. I, I cannot sit up close to no damn movie screen like that. It's too damn big. I even think it might have been an IMAX theater, so that made it worse. But we was way at the front. The damn speakers was loud as hell. It was like we was in the movie damn near, but without a doubt. And then when we got introduced to Velik, the nun in The Conjuring 2, I'm like, she scares the hell out of me, but I like her at the same time. Like she would be on my horror movie villain uh, roster, you know what I'm saying? As far as female, you know, it's a lot. If I had to choose, I'ma go with Friday the 13th because if Freddy versus Jason, right? When the when the girl in the beginning of the movie when she had all her titties and stuff out, trying to get lit in the in the lake, and she, you know, quiet as a skip, you know, uh, her boyfriend would probably got body. The way Jason was just like a stalker and just like who he is had me messed up. But that's all I can say for right now. What would you rank as some of the great horror movies that you guys have seen in your lifetime? Let me know in the comments below. Top 5, top 10, 20, whatever. Y'all let me know in the comments section as well as anything else I can react to for you guys. Hit that subscribe button. Follow me on my Instagram. Hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in a minute. It's Taylor Rain, and I'm out.